Great. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction. And thank you, everybody that's listening in for the, uh, the patience. There's been so much great stuff that have happened. It's uh, a bit humbling for us to, to go last and I got to listen to so many other uh, great innovators uh, in the space. Um, Concert Health uh, believes that every uh, person in this country deserves ex access to exceptional behavioral health services alongside the mm -hmm. provider they trust most. Uh, and we exist to make that happen. And we're building what we hope is becoming the best behavioral health medical group in the country. My name is Spencer, and I am the co-founder and CEO, and I'm joined by my partner in crime and our chief clinical officer, uh, Verna. Verna, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Verna Little. Um, I am Spencer's partner in crime. I'm a psychologist and social worker by trade, um, and super excited to tell you a little bit more about what we've been up to. Yeah, so over the last four years, you know, we've built a, a provider organization that employs closing in on 250 clinicians, uh, cared for 29,000 patients uh, across 12 states, and Arizona was actually our original one, and we've been there uh, treating thousands of patients. Really proud uh, that over 35% of those have had uh, Medicaid as their insurance, um, and a growing group of people under the age of 18. We now serve um, uh, kiddos down to six. And our chief partnership is with a group of amazing uh, medical groups, primary care teams, and health systems uh, working uh, across those markets to really deeply embed in the primary care site to help uh, them deliver a evidence-based model of care called collaborative care, helping improve access and outcomes, saving the time, to, uh, the time and stress for their physicians, uh, making it financially sustainable for the practice and really aligning well uh, with their future in, in value-based care. Uh, you can see uh, several partners from small independent groups in Arizona, uh, the, a large, the largest OB group, Women's Health Arizona, um, and some larger health systems like Tucson Medical Center. Verna will describe quickly the, the clinical model. Sure. Many of you may be familiar with collaborative care, an evidence-based model to identify and treat patients with behavioral health need and in healthcare settings. We're actually really proud to partner with a lot of pediatric-specific practices, as well as family practice and others that, that serve the pediatric and adolescent population. Um, what we bring for collaborative care is we really follow collaborative care to the fidelity of the model. I always like to say we really drank the Kool-Aid uh, when it comes to collaborative care. So we bring uh, licensed mental health providers onto the primary key, uh, care team. We document in the record of the primary care pediatric provider so that when they make a referral, um, they make a referral consistent with what their workflow is for other referrals. We will then respond back and follow up uh, same day, next day, generally within a couple of hours directly to that pediatrician um, so they know what's happening with their referrals real time right in their electronic health record. We also bring a psychiatric consultant. Um, our child and adolescent psychiatric consultants are in all of our markets. They work really closely and also have access to the electronic health record. So they're reviewing information, providing consults and communicating with those pediatric providers. And we've developed a registry that we use that helps us track the population, make sure we're really working with providers on their entire population, as well as tracking outcomes. And the services are uh, patient-centered in the modality. And so most of our work is on a video or phone-based. And some of our uh, partners, we do do some co-location as well. Um, in, in Arizona, um, mm -hmm. folks are familiar. I don't believe that these services are covered yet by West Virginia Medicaid on the fee schedule. Uh, there's a set of uh, new CPT codes. Medicare was the first mover, um, along with a couple of states like, Medi uh, like Arizona and uh, New York um, that covered that. It's on a uh, case rate uh, monthly, uh, normally a service that's classified as a primary care uh, service. And, and one thing we found is that it's exceptionally important uh, for the primary care teams to be able to deliver it all panel, meaning uh, for those practices that have a mix of Medicaid, commercial insurers, or others, right, really having an opportunity to build a service line that can work for all their patients. Um, great momentum in the Medicaid space in particular. 
um, uh, around the country, Texas and Connecticut, about to become states 19 and 20 uh, to offer this uh, coverage to Medicaid beneficiaries. One of the things we're really proud of is tracking the outcomes um, and Verna can talk through a little bit specifically for our adolescent and pediatric populations. Sure, one of the things that we really track are the depression and anxiety outcomes. And as many of you know, seeing more and more three quarters of our adolescents actually um, are anxiety, really looking at baseline scores and then following up for a score prior to that 90 days um, looking at a reduction in, in symptoms of about 38% um, at that 90 day mark following uh, the adolescents and kids up to 120 days, um, where a lot of them um, see a pretty good improvement rate, 60%. Many of the children and adolescents we serve are in our FQHC partners and in some of our underserved communities. So certainly working with a lot of social determinants and, and some other factors. And then, of course, really working to help our partners meet uh, their UDS measure, many of them who are FQHCs, but also really, of course, making sure that we're getting people better and looking for those subclinical scores of five and below and really continuing to see a rate of about in the 60% across our children and adolescents. Also care for a lot of kids with ADD and ADHD using the Vanderbilt, looking at a total reduction in symptoms and tracking that as well um, for our partners. So how could we work with health plans? While well, our principal partner um, has always been, and I think will continue to be that primary care physician, we think we can be really exceptional allies at the plan level as well. So first off, just wanna say thank you to our colleagues and partners at Access. Uh, you all were early and aggressive adopters of collaborative care and let us be really one of the first states that we were able to operate all panel. Um, across um, uh, that, which has allowed us to care for thousands of your members and, and over time, hopefully many tens of thousands more as we continue to scale with our existing and, uh, and new partnerships. Uh, but we think there's really some exciting ways to go from good to great. Um, you know, first is obviously both coverage, uh, but uh, a couple of uh, ways to think about it. One is rate parity. Um, we often are encouraging uh, Medicaid plans to try to uh, stay at 100% of Medicare for these services in their region. Uh, really important to make it work for the primary care teams, especially given how hard it is often to find behavioral health providers that will even take uh, Medicare commercial insurance. Um, also, um, you know, we think while uh, many plans use a two hour limit uh, in collaborative care uh, for that 30 minute modifier, the 99494, we often are working with groups to encourage them to sort of take a more flexible approach, particularly with patients um, that have more urgent symptoms. Um, Vern has led our team in really adopting the principles of zero suicide uh, using techniques like the Columbia, uh, Stanley and Brown safety plans. We think collaborative care can be at a really much more appropriate level of care than traditional outpatient behavioral health, uh, given its ability to sort of flex in time and modality of when and how often you're talking to patients. And so that's a, a particular um, high acuity, uh, incredibly important part of your membership that we can help support through this model if we take a different approach in the way you're doing utilization management there. Second major area is the engagement pathways. Um, while uh, many patients are attached to a primary care physician or a pediatrician, many aren't, uh, or the pediatrician might not realize the symptoms that you're showing up in your own risk scores or some other places they're touching. And we really love to work with plan care management teams or other partners uh, that are identifying these patients, getting them into care and keeping them connected to that medical home that can support their behavioral health um, and, um, and full um, whole person care, which can be so important. Uh, and then the third major area we always uh, like to talk about is, is, is helping support the work that you all are doing in your broader value-based care strategy. Um, you know, we want to build on successes we've had with access, for example, to make sure collaborative care covers the heatest measures around follow-up as for hospitalization. We think this is a really great adaptive model that can, that can both meet those criteria and most importantly, um, uh, allow for the high quality care that's so important that you're trying to measure with those. Um, also, um, really work with you to see whether or not we can uh, continue to extend the research base, uh, look at not only the direct clinical outcomes as measured by their depression scores, but the way that impacts other chronic conditions and total cost of care. I'll really try to replicate uh, the, the research that's been out there, uh, showing that uh, how cost effective is in addition to clinically effective collaborative care can be. 
um, and then really want to align with you on, on where you're taking uh, risk, where you're taking outcome-based reimbursement into the primary care setting um, and be a vehicle to help uh, support that success uh, across the, uh, the groups that you work with um, and that we're often partnering with as well.